Shalom Aleichem. Today is the yard site of Rabbi Shmar Yogarari, known as the Rashag, the Friedrich Rebbe's older, oldest son-in-law and the Rebbe's uh, brother-in-law. So a few words about him. The Rashag was an amazing person in his own right. He, in time, Kate Mimim in Lubavitch, they say he knew 300 by modern Balper. And then he was dedicated to, to uh, the Friedrich Kerebe and various Shlichesen and very, uh, many, many different things that he did. But I want to talk about his, the yeshiva, the Lubavitch yeshiva that he ran here in Brooklyn. There was no such a thing that he would, wouldn't accept the child because of a lack of tuition. He and Robert Weinberg and his fundraisers, it was their job to bring the money. A child wants to come, a bocher wants to come, he made sure that he can come in. And I think it's a very important lesson for us, and his, for his neshama is to understand this idea that the Rebbe and the Rashag didn't accept such a thing to reject a child or a student because of a lack of funds that parents don't have. And I'm not saying that everyone should get a free pass. Of course not. But the bottom line is that every single Yiddish kint, every single student has a right and should be accepted in the yeshiva, for that matter, a girls' school, etc., etc. And uh, I know from personal situations with people where he told Rabbi Bogomilski, who was handling tuition for him during those years when I was in yeshiva, and he said, just ask the people what they can give and write it down, and that's it. Don't ask questions, don't challenge them, don't look at their tax returns. V'chulu, v'chulu. I understand I'm, I'm oversimplifying it, and people have two houses, and they have three cars, and they go on vacations. Yes, yes, those are all issues. But the Nakuda is that the child and the student shouldn't be the ones to suffer because of that. Also, the Rashad was the Rebbe's greatest chassid, as the Rebbe Zinchayim Mushka said, that he, he was the greatest chassid, even though in the beginning in 1950-51 there were issues of, of leadership. It's all discussed in my book, the Rashad and Rebbe, which is worthwhile reading. There's documents and information there that you'll be uh, fascinated to know about, but he gave himself over, he gave the yeshiva over, and he worked he worked so diligently, and he didn't leave a penny for himself. Rabbi Rosenfeld, who worked with him, told me he left over maybe $50,000. He could have been left over, he could have left over millions of dollars. They raised a lot of money for the yeshiva. It all went to Toim Chet Mimim. The will, I put it into the book, the will that he wrote says that he gives everything to Aguch, to Aguch the Chabad. A little bit he gave over, he left for his son Barry because Al Pidin, according to Jewish law, if he didn't, it would be invalid the will. So they told him that he has to leave something over. But really, he wanted to give everything to Aguch. All his material, financial issue matters, and all of his ruchnias, ksavim, manuscripts, things, everything went over to Aguch. So the Schus Lishmose today is a day to, to, to remember things that he did for our community. And uh, he should have a Lichtigen Gan Eden, you know. This is a person who had nothing else in his life except the Rebbe Chesidus. That's all he had, you know. His wife turned against him. His son turned against him. The, the details are known, and those that don't know it don't need to know it. The bottom line is that he passed away at 89, in 1989, I'm sorry, at, uh, he was, he was born in 1899, so he was 90, 90 or so, passed away. And it says, Yorzeit Vav Ir, so we're still Chaim for the Shema, Shaf Taka Lichtig Nan Eden, and we should be Zechit the Gula Shlema together with the Rebbe Kitzar Am Sheikh Neuf, Offer, the Shema of Rosh Mario, Ben Rabbi Nachem Mendel Gerari, Shav and Aliyah, and Shav Zechut to Tchis Hameshim, the Kor of Mamish, Shalim Rakodesh, Ome Viyomit.